the October podcast of Ilona Slow Life Creations. So today it is definitely a slow Saturday. I'm going to park my butt on a chair in front of the TV with my crochet and I'm going to enjoy watching the sport. We won't enter into a sports discussion on the podcast as I'm sure many of you are in countries that will uh, also take part in the World Cup rugby, so we won't talk rugby. Let's keep it peaceful. <laughs> okay, so what happened in October? This happened in October. October, yeah, I published it this last week, I think. This is the Sunflower Road Tea, and um, this was quite a nice project for me to work on. My testers wanted a tee with uh, a square neck. And um, I frogged uh, a couple of times. <laughs> anyway, the stitch pattern is quite nice and dense. Very simple. It's a very nice relaxing crochet for in front of the TV or in the company of people. Because you don't have to think about it too hard. And um, yeah, it came out quite nice. I really like it. And what I've got on is sock weight merino. Now people look at you when you say you wear merino in summer and they're like, are you crazy? No, I'm not crazy. Merino is a very nice fiber to wear in the summer. Obviously, you're not going to go for air and weight or double knit um, sock weight, <coughs> lace or sock weight. It, uh, it regulates your body temperature. It's an extremely comfortable fiber to wear in summer. So I've got quite a few of these little uh, merino toppies for summer in um, sock yarn, and I love them. Some interesting discussion that came about because of this. Uh, one of the testers asked about the fold and um, your it was quite an interesting thing. If you put it on, there's a bit of a fold here. You see, why does that happen? You're creating something with a right angle here. And the moment you drop your arm, you're bringing that side of the square or the triangle, you're bringing it down. So there will be a bit of a fold here. Now, you can look at the sunflower roti and think, ooh, there's a fold, I'm never going to buy it. Go on to Ravelry and Pinterest as a matter of interest, especially with crocheted garments, but also with knitted garments, and see how many of the model photos given with the pattern are people standing like this. Why? Because then you don't see the fold. Go check. And something that I that I actually that the testers and I spoke about is why is it that we go to a shop and we buy a shirt and we wear it. We don't critique the shirt, we just wear it. Even if something is a little bit off, um I saw, I saw a co-worker with a shirt on, a blouse, and it was pulling here in front. Something wasn't lacquer there. But we wear it. We pay it, we wear it, and we don't think about it. But when it's our own makings, we are so critical. I don't want to wear this because there's a fold. I don't want to wear this because this, because that. We don't do that with clothes that we buy. But when we make our own, we are so critical. Now, I'm willing to bet that if I hadn't said anything about the fold, you wouldn't have noticed it. We are way too critical on ourselves and on our craft items than what we should be. Yes, I'm all for give it your best. I'm all for frog if there's a mistake that you can see. Absolutely. But don't be overcritical to the point where you don't enjoy what you've made. You're not that way with board clothes, so why are you that way with stuff that you've made? It's stupid, in my opinion. Okay, so I'm done knitted, knitting. I'm done with knitting for a while, a long while. And I'll tell you why. 
Um, <clears throat> crochet is not as hard on the hands as knitting. That's a fact. My hands are sore. I do have arthritis and my hands are a bit sore. And that's one thing. The second thing is I missed the wacky weave so much. So we are working on a new wacky weave, but I'll get to that later. And the, the third thing is I like making garments. I like making things that I can wear. I absolutely love it. But you know what? There are so many knitting designers in the world. And the crochet designers that design garments, I'm not talking about blankets and shawls and throws and things like that. I'm talking about garments. Crochet designers that do garments are a handful. Uh, I think there's a place for me as a crochet designer, especially with the method that I use to do the patterns, which is a measure and make pattern. What does that mean? It means that you start off with a measurement. It will either be the circumference of your head. I don't have my measuring tape with me. Or it will be the circumference of your neck. And with that, you will calculate the starting chain. My wooden knitting patterns is the same, but we're talking crochet now. You, you calculate the length of the starting chain, and then you will use a few body measurements. You will use, um, for instance, the armhole depth. And your bust. And it's so easy to make something that fits you perfectly. I have a problem. My bust is way too big for the rest of my body. So um, I prefer to make my own tops. For me to buy a top, especially something other than a t-shirt, a plain old t-shirt, is difficult. Because if it's got buttons and sh uh, sh shoulder seams, um, armhole, sleeve seams, it doesn't work. By the time that I get my bosom in, the seam that's supposed to sit here on the shoulder is like way down here. It looks like this thing is way too big for me. If I fit it and this, uh, the seam sits where it's supposed to shit, sit, sit, not shit, <laughs> sit, then the, um, and it's got buttons, then it's gaping. If it hasn't got buttons, it's pulling anyway because this is just too much. So I prefer to, to knit or crochet my own tops. Because crochet and knitting is a lot more forgiving than fabric. It stretches, it moves with you, it's, it's more comfortable. So there's going to be, uh, I'm going to focus on crochet for a while now again. I'm going to do some crochet tops and um, I am going to crochet blankets as well at the same time. I always have a big thing and a small thing going because the big thing can't always travel with me. Then I take the small one. So yeah, the sunflower row tea is out. It's on Ravelry. It's also on my website if you don't want to pay in dollars. If you want to pay in South African Rand, you can buy it on my website. It's 100 Rand on my website and it's $5 on Ravelry. And um, I hope to see a few tops on social media. I love wearing mine and I get compliments every time I wear it. So stuff the fault. I dare you go onto Pinterest and search for crochet tops and go onto Ravelry and browse and see how many models stand like this. Yeah, that's just something to smile about. Okay, so the sunflower row tea happened. The other big thing that I'm extremely ex oh my hair is irritating me. It's now at the stage where it climbs in between my glasses and my face. Ooh, I have to grit my teeth for another couple of months, then it will be longer. Um, Cable Me Cozy. It's the knitted blanket that I designed. Uh, the, the story behind it, I think I've told it to you. I don't know if I have. Sorry if I'm telling it to you again. I can't remember. Um, when I made the first one, the Erin Caress Blanket Cow, I made it for a canopy bed. 
we had a king size canopy bed now because the mattress was inside this wooden box of the canopy bed i only made the blanket to go from side to side with that much overhang on each side it was about five centimeters because that's the mattress that that there was otherwise it would look um it wouldn't be neat and then my son started harassing us for this bed he wanted the canopy bed he's an absolute lover of solid wooden furniture and eventually i got so fed up i said him just take the bed so he did and then we bought a, a normal king size extra length bed and the blanket looks terrible on the bed because it's just these little overhang on the side it, it just doesn't work so that blanket got demoted it went into the spare room and it got a little bit of bleach damage you know i was so upset with myself but anyway it's got five dots spot like this so i wanted to make another one for the bed that we have now so we decided to design a new cable blanket a knitted one I did it again with air and caress in a double strand and I'll tell you why knitting a blanket is a risky thing knitting stretches a whole lot more and easier than crochet because of the way that the fabric that you create when you knit or, or crochet differs crochet is a whole lot more sturdy than knitting so if you want to knit a blanket you must think very carefully about what are you going to use how thick is it and how much stretch is going to be you see there yeah if you want to knit i don't i don't knit normally i don't knit a blanket uh, bigger than um, a baby blanket with anything that looks or feels like wool whether it's real merino or whether it's acrylic yarn made to imitate merino you're gonna have a stretching problem especially if you you have to wash that thing uh, wool absorbs a whole lot of water and it becomes very heavy when it's wet so for me to knit with well Apart from the fact that I can't afford to knit a king size extra length blanket in wool that's going to cost me an arm and a leg. Um, the main reason for me not going that route is because it's going to stretch. So cotton is a far better choice than wool or wool imitations. And the thicker you can go, the better because the more sturdy. And the cables also pull the knitting in and it holds the knitting so you don't have a stretch problem with the cables so that is why I chose to go again with Moya Caress because that textured cotton is just amazing it's got the most amazing feel it looks beautiful in the cables it's nice and thick and it's nice and sturdy so cable Mikosi is done I'm still waiting for two of my testers to finish but soon there will be a, a couple of um, uh, photos on social media to show you what it looks like um, it is divine but I only f realized yesterday or no it was earlier in the week I realized that I never had a baby one made everybody tested the big sizes so if you are very good in knitting and you feel like testing the baby blanket pop me a message if i can get another tester in to quickly knit the baby blanket before february that will be great yeah otherwise the color is going to start on the 7th of february which is my birthday i wonder what day it is let's see if it's so what what kind of no, no, no. where's my calendar what Ooh. Let's just do a month. November, December, January, February. The 7th of February is a Wednesday. So on the 7th of February, on the Wednesday, 
the uh, Cable Me Cozy Cowl will start. Kits will be on sale uh, around about the beginning of November. We will have the kits on sale at Afrique. Um, you can pay the kit in installments. They've got um, a payment gateway on their website where you can pay the kit in installments, which is very nice because I know yarn is expensive. So you make a nice Christmas present as well. Why not? Tell your family that's what you want. They can club in and get you a kit for Christmas. That'll be quite nice. Other than that, we're starting on the 7th of February. We will start advertising the cow and um, really sharing things and whatever have you in November. All right. Then, you will see on my website that there's another product on my website that's got absolutely nothing to do with yarn. But it's got everything to do with the slow life and it's called a wonder bag. Uh, let me go fetch one so that I can show you. Hold on. Okay, so this is a wonder bag. It's got this little drawstring that pulls it tight. So let's loosen that. It's got this little pillow lid. And in the bottom I've got a very old um, pot holder. And this is what it looks like on the inside. Let's open it up a bit more. Now it's filled. I, I can't remember the name now. It's got a filling in here. It's called heat retention technology. This is a slow cooker. I kid you not. Okay, so how does it work? You get your food going on the stove or whatever you're doing in a pot until everything is thoroughly hot. You, it must be hot to the point where you can't put your hand on the sides of the pot or on the lid and keep it there. It must be hot. Then you put something in the bottom, an old pot holder or a tea towel folder double or whatever, so it's just to protect the fabric. You put your pot on top of it. You put this lid on top of the pot and you pull the drawstring closed and you leave it. Now let me tell you what I've made. When we were camping, the, you would have seen a lot of photographs on social media when we were in the bush. When we were camping, I took a pot. Now I prefer to use cast iron pots, but you don't have to. You can use any type of pot. It must just not have a long handle because then it won't fit. I took a pot and I fried in butter. I fried onion and uh, mushroom and bacon pieces bacon bits and potato blocks I just fried them until the pot was hot it took me about five minutes um, then with spices whatever I put the lid on I put it in the pot we got people that came to the campsite for uh, a lacquer braai and um, three hours later when the meat was done the potatoes were delicious you don't have to stand and watch a pot it can't burn it can't really overcook it just works the one morning uh, it took me 20 minutes to prep and get going a butter chicken in a pot uh, the prepping took me 10 minutes, the frying in the pot took me 10 minutes and then I shoved it in there and both my husband and I started working and at about 2 o'clock we were hungry and the butter chicken was divine. The one day we took a lamb shank, a whole lamb shank, we browned it in a little bit of oil, um, we got the pot thoroughly hot, put the potatoes in, shoved it in the wonder bag and we worked until it was time for lunch and it was lovely the only thing that you need to watch out for is with the conventional method of cooking the liquid will cook down with this the liquid has nowhere to go so from the beginning you must have 
the amount of liquid that you want at the end. That's the only thing. Rice and beans and Sam, delicious. Works like a charm. There are three sizes on the website you can choose from and there are four colors you can choose from. Now, if you are outside of South Africa and you would like to buy one, let me know. Just send me an email or a WhatsApp or whatever or send me a message and I will get a quotation for you for shipping. I don't currently have an international shipping um, option on my website so uh, phone me first or whatsapp me email me so that i can get you a quote for the shipping and then i will generate the invoice for you send you the invoice you make the payment and i ship it off to you don't buy it on the website because you don't know what the shipping is going to be let me first get a quote for you so my wonder bags that to me is slow life knitting I can quickly get some great food going in 20 minutes in the morning and I can put it away. Now you might wonder how long does it stay warm. After six hours the pot will still be too hot for you to handle with your bare hands, I kid you not. Well, one day we did a test. We placed two cans of beer and two cans of uh, JC LaRue champagne sleds up is we put that in there and we left it to see how long it will keep it cold after seven hours it was as cold as when it came out of the fridge it's amazing so yeah the wonder bag is my new best friend i love it okay that's the wonder bag the last thing that i want to discuss is the new crocheted blanket the wacky weave I finally got to the point of uh, designing another wacky weave. It's the design is finished. Um, we've already started uh, crocheting it, me and the testers. Um, I'm very excited about it. Um, this one is made with color spun cotton, the same cotton that we used for wacky weave Celtic knots. Lovely cotton to work with the uh, fuss factor on the cotton is very low so you don't have these little fluffies in your nose and everywhere it's a very nice cotton to work with and um, what's the theme now as a child um, young child small child i was the latecomer my brother is eight years older than I am and my sister is 11 years older than I am and, um, so I was still pretty young when they were out of the house already and I can remember us driving down from Gauteng to KZN at that stage it was still not tall uh, to visit family and my parents knew that when we get close to this area they had to wake me up I wanted to see I couldn't wait to see what did I want to see the Hindebele houses we always drove past the Hindebele houses and I absolutely loved seeing the houses with the geometrical patterns painted on the sides of the houses um, still to this day I absolutely love it we went to uh, a weekend gifted us for my husband's 60th birthday and on that weekend we dropped into um, a museum close to the place where we were going and they had a Hindabele village uh, when, when I stood in front of that I suddenly realized this is what I want to do for the next Wacky Weave it's, it's, the theme is Wacky Weave Hindabele so I will share on social media some Hindabele things you can go look at. But it's a very strong geometrical pattern and very bright, colorful and cheerful. And I just love the Hindabeles. So Wacky Weave Hindabele has been born. We are working on it and the cull will start somewhere next year. We'll give a date when we are closer to the end of it. I'm extremely happy to be working with Wacky Weave again. I really, really missed it. So for now, the knitting is over for the hookers. We're going to hook a lot. Yeah, we're going to hook a lot. 
I've got yarn for some nice tops and um, wacky weave is going to keep me occupied so for now it's just crochet 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 all the way I hope you enjoyed the podcast I hope you are going to take part in for the knitters I hope you're going to take part in cable me cozy buy your kits from freak yarn it helps to support me as well I get a small commission on the kit sales and um, enjoy the weekend and if you're a sports lover like me i hope you're gonna sit in front of the tv with your crochet or your knitting and just enjoy the sports at least um, i think in this group we love our craft more than we love the sport even if we love the sport dearly so we're not gonna fight about the sport we're just gonna enjoy it and we're gonna celebrate our craft afterwards I hope you're going to have a great month. I'll see you again in November. And by that time, it's all Christmas all over the world. Every shop will be filled with Christmas trees and decorations and whatever have you. Can you believe it? This year is sprinting to an end. It's funny season, so let's be kind to one another. Let's have soft words for each other. Before you type something nasty on Facebook, think how it will make the other person feel. Let's go through this funny season, this festive season, with love in our hearts, with kindness in our hearts, and kindness towards each other. Towards each other. There you go. I hope you have a great Saturday.